job done. It wasn't particularly exciting from Brazil. Uh, it seemed a little bit more complicated than it needed to be. Neymar playing from very deep positions and for whatever reason he's obsessed with showboating on his own half of the field and inviting challenges. Ecuador was more than willing to go ahead and make it a physical match and when it became physical then Ecuador had more of an opportunity but in, in the end Brazil I think they get a little help with the first goal by Richarlison where Alexander Dominguez, the goalkeeper from Ecuador, gets beaten at the near post. Once they score that goal, it was always going to be very difficult for Ecuador to come back. And then a penalty kick that was, had to be retaken because of VAR, checking upon the fact that Alexander Dominguez once again makes a mistake. He comes off the line. Neymar takes it. And arrogant as he may be, he puts it away. 2-0, Brazil three points, no drama, up until after the game when Casemiro opened up his mouth. Yeah, let's go into that a little bit, Ali. Your Casemiro's comments, obviously, about Brazil and his participation in Copa America. Chiche as well coming out, talking about his future in kind of a coded way. Yeah, very much so. There was nothing coded about what Casemiro was saying, though. Essentially, and, and if you listen to the interview, he's just saying, look, we have a lot of things to say. We're going to concern ourselves with the game against Paraguay and the World Cup qualifiers because the World Cup means, means everything to us. And so therefore, we don't want to take away from that. But once we play that game, we're going to be heard. And this is not just me coming out and talking. This is the voice of all the players. And I speak for us, for the players and the whole technical commission, as, as they call it in Brazil. We're all together in this, including Tite. And we have one voice. And our voice is very clear. Right now, we're very concerned about what's going on with Copa America. And essentially, as you read between the lines, they're saying, we don't want to play this under mm. these circumstances. And of course, that has created a whole lot of reaction from everybody. Yeah, just to put this into context, of course, it was moved from Argentina to Brazil, Gab, because of COVID and the problems in Argentina. Brazil are dealing with their own problems at the moment. A lot of people looked at this situation and thought, well, why can't they move it to the US and have it in a bubble here? Well, I mean, you mean other than the fact that uh, the U.S. is part of CONCACAF and CONCACAF are having their own big regional tournament at the same time called the Gold Cup? Uh, I mean, that's, I think, first and foremost, the obvious thing. Um, but uh, beyond that, obviously, there's gonna, there would have been a ton of logistical issues, visas and whatever to be able to, to get these guys to the U.S., um, in, in, such, in, in such a short period of time, especially the ones who are coming you know, from areas that have been hit hard uh, by COVID. Uh, but, but I think beyond that, this is a big failure of, of Commonball in terms of, of planning, because you remember originally it was supposed to be Colombia and Argentina, then Colombia pulled out because of social unrest, some of it related to COVID, some of it not. Then the cases spiked in Argentina and then all of a sudden, they've got like 10 days to go and they pick Brazil. But even then, you have a whole bunch of Brazilian states and, and regions saying, no, no, we don't want it in our region. You go play it somewhere else. So it's kind of been compressed in Brazil. It's not a good situation. Uh, not good at all, Ali. It's, can you see this tournament just no, not happening? I, I, it's supposed to start next weekend, isn't it? Well, exactly. <laughs> there is the matter of well, this tournament is upon us. Yep. And, and right now, where we sit, I, I, I must tell you, I'm not certain that this tournament is going to go forward. And the reason I say that is it takes a lot for players to take the position that Casemiro, representing the players from Brazil, are taking in voicing their concerns. And now that's Brazilian players who will be playing Copa America in home soil meaning that they would have the inside track in this tournament, meaning that they would be indeed the favorites. If they're the favorites any time they play in South America, but even more so when they're going to be playing the tournament at home. And yet they are the ones saying, we don't want any part of this. It doesn't make any sense that we took this tournament from Argentina because of COVID concerns. And what do we do from one red zone to another red zone in Brazil? Those concerns from the Brazilian players, I imagine, are also being voiced by other players in South America and by other national teams. They themselves must be saying, wait a minute, if the Brazilians in Brazil <laughs> don't want to play there, why are we going to go there? What, what makes us different than them? 
Why would we expose ourselves when they themselves don't want to expose themselves? That, I think, creates a very, very untenable situation. But in the end, I believe that this is, as most of the things are when it comes to making decisions, it's not about the welfare of the players, it's not about the well-being of the players or, or those that are involved in putting the tournament together. No, 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 not the everyday worker. This is about rights and sponsorship and money that have already been sold. And it's also a political stance that is being taken by the current president of Brazil, Jair Bolsonaro. All of those things put together are going to say, you know what? Too bad. You don't want to play? We don't care. The tournament is going forward. I would suggest that maybe you take a step back and say, is this really the right thing to do? And the answer, logically, when you look at it from the outside looking in, is no. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+.